Do not let your ego win or your chip get too big. Great play, great job. Celebrate with your buddies. Don't make somebody else look stupid. Welcome back to the Pure Athlete Podcast. Uh, again, the show where we're going to deep dive into conversations, examples, real world uh, items so we yeah. can provide some education and resources for student athletes and their parents. Uh, we've got uh, a lot on deck this week. Mm-hmm. Obviously, since we've started, it's been NFL yeah. season yeah. And, and NHL season, but we've been really focused on the uh, on some of the NFL. It's pretty prevalent as of right now. So we've got some good things to talk about there. But uh, today we have uh, a pretty cool deep dive. But before we get there, go ahead and like and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, the Pure Athlete itself is growing, especially in our local community. Mm-hmm. But also we've got some nationwide listeners and we've got some nationwide uh uh, guests that have been on and we've got a lineup coming forward that's going to be very yeah. very cool and we're excited to be able to produce that out and you know just like when we do these we're always going to be asking them their perspectives mm-hmm. what they went through what they wish they would have known and some of these that are coming up have whether it's degrees or healthcare professionals or professionals in coaching mm-hmm. and so we've got a lot of good things coming up so make sure you subscribe get all the alerts drop us some comments give us some feedback but uh, super excited for this one because yeah. uh, we are on the front end of the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. We now know who is going Wild. to be in it. Yeah. But uh, where do you want to start? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that happened this week that kind of triggered us into this deep dive. Mm-hmm. Um, one being your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually post this on social media this weekend. So Lamar Jackson, after he kind of knows that they're not going to win, they're not mm-hmm. moving on. He just immediately tanks. He gets yeah. visibly upset on the sideline. Um, and that kind of led us into our deep dive, which is everyone's watching. Um, yeah. Everyone's watching, whether it's people in the stands, people on TV, um, little kids who look up to you, other coaches, teammates. Yeah. The list goes on. Yeah. So our, our goal here is not to be the Pat McAfee show and show you all of the highlights and things <laughs> like that. But really, like I said at the beginning, to make this a real world discussion and use this as examples. And so first thing I'm, I'm going to say before we jump into this is I am in no way here to point fun, to discriminate, or I just want to be able to use real life examples. Yeah. And if I did something of the sort, and I'll tell you, I wish I would have known my perspective now of when I was playing, because you could have called me out all day long. <laughs> but no matter who the athlete is, um, I, you know, it, we're just going to use them to be able to help student athletes maybe transition their thought process a little differently or to just be aware because I think even Zay Flowers would have wished that somebody would have could have said something to him um, because I feel for him so this is not a I can't believe that it's not all about Zay and who he is or what he stands for because I don't think he's very happy with Mm -hmm. what has happened and that was really the first thing that I saw as we head into this deep dive topic of everybody's watching it's also the the topic could be um place place your agenda behind the agenda of your team yeah. and i think i said something to that along the lines of my post is you know put your agenda aside and let the team's agenda go forward because zay did make a big play during that game and this is kind of leading into what you had said about mm-hmm. uh lamar jackson you know tanking afterwards as well but when uh zay makes a, a huge catch and then stands up and taunts like visibly taunts i'm not here to de- to you know kind of debate whether it was taunting or not the ball hit him he stood over him flexed on him and uh you know that is something that a passionate response to a big play yes but at the same time there's there's a lack of discipline there knowing and honestly that that play changed everything about their opportunity to play for a championship yeah i'm not saying that's what denied them the opportunity you still got to play the rest of the game but i think i see a lot of even kids nowadays on the court on the floor um in between the lines underneath the scoreboard wanting to flex on people and like i said i think there's a lot of a lot of passion there's a lot of 
uh, emotion in yeah. a game, but you gotta be disciplined. And Zay did it. I can't say it's not Zay's fault. Zay, I mean, that was his response. But having a conversation like this and letting them know, it's like, look, go flex with your team members. Mm -hmm. Don't taunt over others. I'm a huge guy of help people up off the ground. Um, you know, you hit somebody, you don't have to like be all chum with them, but it's like, you know, show some sportsmanship, show a little respect or just walk away and go celebrate with your team. Right. There's no need to make yourself look cool because then it got him 15 yards. Mm -hmm. And then he has a second opportunity. He wants to be the hero. And the Chiefs did this. It almost cost him last week. Yeah. And but you see these guys, you know, you you it's I think it was even first down. He gets an opportunity. He stretches out, loses the ball in a fumble. Basically, the very next time he touches the ball. So now you've got insult, another insult, and then he slaps his hand off the uh, off the bleacher, and now he's got injury. Right. So literally double insult to injury, and he stretches out, tries to be the hero when you've got three more downs that you could two or three more downs that you could literally win this ball game. You, you're you've got three guys coming at you, and you want to stretch the ball out to try to cross the plane like you I mean he wasn't just right there he had to like stretch four feet to get the touchdown they yeah. knocked the ball out <laughs> and now the Chiefs got the ball touchback now you're on the 20 going the other direction right big big swing so uh, along the post that I posted the other night it wasn't a, a, a jab at, at him I didn't even put his name I did put a picture of him because <laughs> everybody saw it yeah everybody saw it and I just said student athletes please go flex with your team put your agenda of how cool you can look over the top of somebody else. Right. Like put that stuff to the side. Don't let your ego win. That's what it was. I said, do not let your ego win or your chip get too big. Great play. Great job. Celebrate with your buddies. Don't make somebody else look stupid because you did that. Cause now you look not so hot yourself. Yeah. And that's why leadership so important because yeah. if you're a leader who's doing that, there's people who are watching to see what you're doing in a high six situation. Mm -hmm. It's why as coaching, like you have to keep your cool, even though you don't want to, or if someone does step out of line, like they would have been in my locker room if that was yeah. me in a, in a second. Yeah. Um, and that's just why, like we talk about leadership all the time, but that's why it's not just the captains or the coaches who are the leaders. It's everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to step up. Everyone has to be a like, actionable leader mm -hmm. and do things that are going to be transcended down the line. Yeah. And I mean, you could see, I mean, he's obviously disgusted with himself. Nobody, yeah. you know, even, you know, in competition, like I always want to beat people straight up. Yeah. You know, I want your best players on the field. I want, I want the best plays made. I don't want, you know, weird, you know, situations happening or stuff like that, that really didn't need to like the, the preventable things. Yeah. Like if you can, if you can just get rid of what you can control and, you know, lack of control is like you said, really just lack of discipline, mm -hmm. you know, the leadership side, then to get back to your point, you see Lamar tank and it is emotional. Like right. you're allowed to feel that way, but how it's expressed and how quickly you recover from that and, you know, I wasn't on, this, on the sidelines. I don't know exactly everything that happened from the point of that penalty, then the fumble to after that. Right. Um, so I, I think they're going to show you what they want to show you. So I don't know how he responded. Did he say anything to Zay? Did he stay secluded? I mean, the best thing to do is not confront, but acknowledge that. Go be with your player from that point of leadership. You know, quarterbacks typically get the captain card pulled on them most mm -hmm. often. Um, so I don't know what that looked like. I don't really want to speculate on that, but how you lead through that just yeah. coming from a, a generic, um, broad standpoint is when you're in a position like Lamar's is allowing yourself to sit in that for a second is okay. But how you respond and what your course of action is with almost what a full quarter, half a quarter left mm -hmm. and still in the ball game yeah. at that point. There's a big, big opportunity there for you to lead through it versus play through it. I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't play in that scenario. I would <laughs> lead through it. Yeah, and kind of on the other side of the the hat here, I guess if you will. Um, I mean Brock Purdy's going to mm -hmm. the Super Bowl. Yep. He was not only the last pick in the draft, but he was literally named Mr. Irrelevant. Um, which I think is so cool that young athletes not even like quarterbacks it doesn't even matter every athlete mm -hmm. can look at that and be like it doesn't matter what my like stereotype is going into really anything yeah. it's really what you make out of the opportunity and how to make it work 
for you and your team. Yeah, absolutely. And this is why <laughs> this is why my, my new favorite thing after our, our podcast with with Will yeah. that dropped this <laughs> you know this past week. Uh, that's why the biggest thing is don't praise the statistic. That's my that's my biggest high right now. Don't yeah. praise the statistic. And it, you know, to your point in pointing that out is you can also I mean Patrick Mahomes has a similar story. Yeah. And a lot of people will be like, What are you talking about? He went <laughs> in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. But the Bills traded down and the Chiefs ended up with his pick. Yeah. And then now look at him. So it's not, no, he wasn't drafted last. But, you know, there's other people that's like, no, we don't need to take him there. He's got a similar story. Right. Tom Brady. What yep. was he drafted? Like in the sixth round yeah, or wasn't, something? I don't, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not too big on ingraining those statistics in my head. But uh, he was drafted late. Didn't, you know, there's a, there's an interview where he's like, literally I had to take a walk. He's like, at that point, I just, I knew I wasn't going to be playing football anymore. Mm -hmm. And then his dad calls him as he's on this walk down the street of his neighborhood, mm -hmm. trying to cool off thinking he's not playing football anymore. And he gets drafted late and look at what he's done, yeah. you know? So don't praise the statistic and also don't rule anybody out. It's like, why anybody, I mean, the fact that he was drafted at all mm -hmm. was incredible. Yeah. But I think it also shows a little bit of, to his perseverance because I can guarantee you Brock Purdy, and I'm a pretty good person. In, in reading somebody like Brock, it's, you know, he's confident, far from cocky, mm -hmm. and I don't think he would ever count himself out too. But I think he would also be very honest and be like, look, I'm new here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I believe in our abilities. I have a great team. I have an amazing coach. Our defense is stellar. Yeah. Like, he's got everything there, and he knows it. But he's also humble enough to be like, I'm new here. Yeah. This is why they had to come back from 14 or 17 points. Mm -hmm. And it's like, holy cow. It's like, did the Lions shit the bed? Maybe, maybe not. But at the same time, you still have to perform. And for him to come through and just step by step, very methodically, very, very calmly, to go into the locker room the way they did, and then come out and do what they've done. Um, I don't think there's any better preparation for a young quarterback like yeah. that. The biggest Just thing that it. I can say about the 49ers, and I've always been a quiet 49ers fan back in the <laughs> Montana days and Ronnie Lott and Jerry Rice and Steve Young was entering the scene, and I've always liked that team. But especially now when you've got the – the the son of of Mike Shanahan, yeah, you know you got Kyle Shanahan right as the as the head coach, um, but as an organization to trust in Purdy, because if you go back over the past eight ten years in their quarterback conversation, they've trusted everybody they've put there and they've they've hired fast and fired faster, mm -hmm. but it's been very methodical and they've always trusted who they've put there and if they've had to make a move they they've done it yeah. But kudos to them for standing by him, whether he was the perfect fit for the job or not. I think they're finding out very quickly that they he found, is. Found his get their guy. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it also, we've kind of talked about it before, but, like, hard work will beat talent every time. Yeah. And that just is <laughs> the perfect case mm -hmm. of this. Um, I mean, it's also really cool that everyone on the team – has kind of rallied behind him as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's really, I could imagine, I'm <laughs> not an NFL player, <laughs> but I could imagine it'd be hard, like being a veteran and having a new QB come in. Like the locker room's kind of going to change a little bit. And it's kind of your job to show them the way, but also mm -hmm. know that they have to lead you in a certain way on the field. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really cool that the team, like you kind of mentioned, did that as well as the coaches. Um, I think it's going to be really cool to see them face the Chiefs as yeah. a well-established team, if you will, but they also haven't had the strongest of season, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it'll be interesting, really, to see what happens. Yeah, and I don't know where he ranks an, uh, among the team in, in leadership or yeah. captain status or, or things like that, but uh, do I think he is one of the leaders on the team? Like I said, I think by default, I think the I think they football as a get, whole, yeah. like the quarterbacks get that, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I would – like I said, I, I just think you'd, he's also in the point now, too, to where it's like he, he knows he has to lead accordingly. Mm -hmm. He has leadership qualities. But I think if you asked him, be like, look, there's so many other leaders on this team that he still looks up to. Yeah. So, But the leadership qualities he does have are super great. And to watch him perform through them and how he's carried himself with a game like that, with mm -hmm. what was on the line, um, if he's, you know, I, again, I don't think he's – the leader of that team. I think he's a leader of that team. Yeah. 
and evolving into the, the leader, leader of that team. I mean, you've got Kittle, you've got Bosa, you've got you've got so many big names on that team. Yeah. Um, but also too, I think I love that team dynamic. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's not many teams in the NFL I don't like. I've said that yeah. before. Yes, the <laughs> Chiefs are local, and you know I've kind of adopted them for all kinds of reasons. I, I like the talent pool. I like the way they play. I love Andy Reid. But it's the same thing with the 49ers and the team that they have. Um, I think they would all agree, like, they've got a bunch of leaders on that team. Mm-hmm. They have a great, great team. And I don't think any one of them is out to be bigger than the other, yeah. which is what you saw with the Ravens. Yeah. And so that's why it's, you know, stay humble. Stay humble. Put your head down. Head down, eyes up, and work through it. Yeah, I think it's going to be really cool to see um, – that all unfolds. <laughs> Sometimes you get like so excited for the Super Bowl and then it's a blowout. I know. So I'm hoping <laughs> for the sake of entertainment that mm-hmm. it's not a blowout and they really go like, I hope it's a nail biter. Yeah. I just love good sport nail biter. <laughs> so with that being said, just to kind of summarize that for the relevancy of, of parents and yeah. student athletes is keep in mind, you know, uh, the old Tim McGraw song, <laughs> stay humble and kind. <laughs> Like, really, be be passionate, be emotional. If you want to flex, flex with your team. Yeah. Do it uh, in, in your locker room or on your sideline. There's nothing wrong with that. When you're trying to out somebody and make yourself look so much better than an opponent, it will come back to bite you. Let the scoreboard say it. You know, let a whole stat line, not yeah. a single statistic, define who you are. Because, you know, there were drops that were had, too. Yeah. Like, there were some people that could have made him look really dumb as well. And they didn't flex on him when they got that penalty. Right. Um, but so keep in mind, you know, where you're at in the game, what it can cost you. Is it worth it? And really, what's your agenda? Look in the mirror and see if you feel good about putting all of your other teammates at stake, whether you're a dance team of eight mm-hmm. or if you're a football team of 150. Right. Like, if you're willing to put your team on your back and look in the mirror and be okay with it, with what you're about to decide to do, you better, <laughs> you better think again. Yeah. You know, use that, use that time, take a second because you have a whole lineup that's willing to celebrate with you. Yeah. Do that instead. Yeah. All right. It's time for our, one of our favorite segments. <laughs> um, hit us, Sam. What's up guys? Producer Sam, where's your hat? You know, I, <laughs> It's it's here. Let's take a picture. She washed her hair today. <laughs> she washed her hair today. Hey, we're gonna give you a behind the scenes. <laughs> oh man, I'm stuck on video. I just want a picture. Uh, no hat today for producer yeah. Sam. No no hat for me, but it's I'll wear it tomorrow. Okay. Then we can take a picture and post this side by side. She's got all kinds of hats she wears. I she do. Um, what you got? The Chiefs obviously won the AFC Championship this weekend. Go Chiefs! Um, but this season has been full of backlash about Travis and Taylor, about the receiving core, just about coaching, about Mm -hmm. Patrick, about how, you know, Travis is, you know, on his way out. He's going to retire, but they still won. So as reigning champions like they are, how do the players and the organization themselves, how do they help shoulder the pressure of being champions in a season that may not be what everyone was expecting yeah I mean as someone who's uh gone through being a reigning champion and had to (laughs) defend it every year um it's gets harder every single year every year that you win the people will below you will come to your standard and so you have to raise your standard every year so not only are you working harder to beat yourselves but you're working harder to maintain something that was even harder to get Um, so the biggest thing for this is you can't let up. You have Mm -hmm. to change what you do. You can't stick with what everyone else is about to do. And I think that's, they're doing that. And I think that's why there's backlash. Um, I don't think any of it is super negative. I mean, we all know that there's been some issues on the receiving core for them, but I think that's just in the limelight because they are the reigning champions and now they're returning, which is going to put a lot of pressure on them specifically. And so I'm, excited to see how they handle that pressure because it can do one of two things it can either tank them or it's going to propel them to win again Mm -hmm. either of you want to describe what i have said in the practice for the past eight days about this game about just this game in general or about the chiefs i shouldn't even say about the baltimore game uh the the he he predicted that the chiefs were going to win and that they were going to get their lives in order (laughs) here (laughs) I mean, I did say with a team like that, and again, 
yes, we're local, we're, we're semi-local to Kansas City. We're just across the other side of the state. We're a few hours away, and we all do enjoy watching the Chiefs. Um, but bias aside, uh, it could be, I mean, this could have been New England, you know, a handful of years ago. Uh, this could have been the Bills in the early 90s. Right. This could have been the Steelers back in the 70s. Yeah. Um, or the Dolphins uh, mm. back in that day as well. The Dolphins. When a team has done what the Chiefs have done, mm-hmm. I don't care if you like them, dislike them, rivals or not, you cannot bet against them if they get one win. Yeah. They had a great game in the in the wild card in the wild card game. It was mm-hmm. like, holy cow, there they where have, where have they been yeah. all year? Good Still morning. not a perfect game. <laughs> yeah. And then the second game comes, and it's like, man, you like you guys didn't even deserve to win. They were in hero mode. Everybody was trying to score their touchdown yeah. to put the game away, and it almost cost them. So you had a game like that, and I kind of look at the strategy of that as well. Even when I was playing, it's like, okay, what does this team's last three weeks look like? It was basically on a three-week r- wheel for me. And it's like they had a great game, probably right. one of the better games all season, or in the, at least in the second half of the season. Then they had a game that was very questionable, like, oh, I guess the Ravens are going to go to the Super Bowl. That combination of those two games – is exactly what that team needed and what nobody else wanted. Yeah. Because you have a great game. Hey, we know how to do this. And then, oh, we got a little cocky because we thought we knew how to do this, and we do. And then you show up and you beat the Ravens like that. And, and you know, they, it could have been – it was a seven-point game. It could have been a 20-point game. Yeah. Um, and I said if they make it to the AFC Championship, I will not bet against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes with their leadership yeah. and with their their quality that they put out and what the talent they do have. The receiving core, they're young. Mm-hmm. They're and I had told you guys too, and, and a lot of our clients that love to come and talk about, oh man, I don't know about the Chiefs. I'm so scared because they're all so passionate yeah. about it. I'm like, if you can get Valdez, Scantlin, and Rice going, and somebody needs to tell them you are that good. Stop trying to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Catch the ball, run fast. Like it's run your route. Don't second guess yourself. Be you. And that's what they have found. And even in the play, like in those first couple games of the playoffs, that light bulb went off. And now, I mean, I'm going to take them in the Super Bowl. How do you not? Yeah. So the the preparation for that and how they've gone about that is they just got to stay consistent. I mean, they've Patrick Mahomes hasn't not been in an AFC game since he's been a starter yeah. or AFC championship game since he was a starter. Um, they're what five out of the last six, six Super Bowls they they're in it. Yeah. Four out of the last five, four out of the last six. Uh, again, I don't praise the statistics, so forgive me for not knowing the exact statistics, <laughs> but it's a high. Yeah. I'm 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 not gonna go against them, and and you just with that kind of knowledge, that kind of experience. You just you can't beat that. Yeah, and from, from some an teams are just like better under pressure. Their coaches work better under pressure. Their leaders mm-hmm. work under and better under pressure. And I think that's honestly the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. In the beginning of the season, they were like, "Well, here we go. We're gonna just go play some ball." But now that there's pressure, they're all gonna perform better, and they are showing that they're gonna perform better. Diamonds weren't made in a day. Mm-hmm. Even the new lab-grown diamonds, <laughs> still not made in a day. Like, the more pressure you put on them. Could you imagine if that core, like when, when the Patriots did this, I mean, in this generation, when the Patriots went through and started doing this, could you imagine if that same team yeah. was still here today playing the way that they were playing? They're so good at it because they have been there. Like, you can't substitute hard work and experience. Right. You just can't. Mm-mm. Like, they weren't the most talented team in the world, but they worked the hardest and they were consistent. Yeah. So imagine if we had those Patriots and these Chiefs and what they're still doing, yeah. like, that's a hell of a game. But then y- you've got 49ers coming up behind that. They've been very consistent, too. They do have a new quarterback. I don't think that's a disadvantage Mm-mm. because also, too, getting back to the Brock Purdy conversation and, like, how do you – how do the Chiefs get ready? Why are they so good at this? What's our thoughts on that? You got to you, – you can't let your guard down because – he has nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. Like that's some of those guys will just show up and just wreck you and you won't even know it hit you. Yeah. Like they just go without regard and just send it. <laughs> so, but I, uh, the experience and the personnel that they have, it's going to be good. Yeah. It's going to be real good. Yeah. And I think there's always a lot of questions around any big game, not just the Super Bowl, any championship game is like, well, how do you prepare for that? There's, not a good way to just prepare for that one game. You mm-hmm. have to be preparing f- that like your whole season. I always say like you don't got to get ready if you stay ready. Yeah. And so you should be like in 
peak competition mode from the time that you start. You should be preparing your body for it. And even bigger, you should need to prepare your brain for it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing that these two teams can do instead of running their bodies into the ground is just visualizing what's going to happen. Yep. Um, and there's so many other mental things that they can do, but that's just like the biggest thing that comes to my mind right now is instead of having two a days and three a days a week before the Super Bowl, it's not worth it. Mm -mm. If anything, you're just putting your body under more stress, more injury. You never know what's going to yeah. happen. You're keeping them consistent. Yeah. Keep the schedule consistent. And I'm not here. Uh, I don't even need to go down the coaching route of how to go about that. I haven't done that to that caliber yet. But just on the mental side of it, it's it's the hardest practices have mm -hmm. already been practiced. Uh, it's you know there's there's no more preparation other than schemes and tape and right. now you're dealing with new offense and right. new, de new defense. But stay consistent through it. Um, if you're not a starter, you know you got to give them the best look possible as far as when you are on the field. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably I mean they're going to be in in barely shells for practice this yeah. week. It's like what else are you going to do? I, I'm like, I mean, I'm, I agree with you. It's like, what else are you going to do this week that you haven't been doing all yeah. year? Because the chances are the the ones that are no longer in the playoffs didn't do it all year long. Exactly. So the fact that you're there, I think you can, you can go in reverse mode and, and look at the seasons, the, the hard knocks versions <laughs> of what did the Bills season look like? Love. What did the Baltimore season look like? What did, um, what did the Green Bay's, the Packers season look like? And you can go back, and it's more often than not, I think, the consistency of how they practice throughout. Yeah. Like you said, staying ready. Those that have stayed ready and pushed through it, it's like, yeah, the Chiefs didn't have their best record in the world. That's why you don't praise a statistic. Yeah. It's like you're looking at what what are they? Ten and ten and seven. What did they finish? Nine and ten and seven, I think, or something like that. And dun, it's it's dun, like, well, they're not dun, fourteen dun, and three dun. like they usually have been. Yeah. But. It's they've been consistent and they made it. They gave themselves an opportunity, and so it'll. Uh, I don't think there's really much more you you can do at this point mm -hmm. than just keep doing what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, just trusting what you've already done. The Chiefs were 11 and six going into playoffs. Yeah, so you know you look. You, you know, unfortunately, the Eagles had the exact opposite conversation. That's what I was about to say they started off so strong. Yeah, they had one loss in the first nine games and just. Yeah, just spiraled down. And, and then the Giants beat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Cutlets yeah. beat them. <laughs> so no matter what, it's a it's a fun time. It's it's a fun time w just being on that roster because everybody still has an opportunity to make an impact. Yeah. Like you're on that roster for a reason. And this goes, again, outside of, you know, as the student athletes we've seen, we've poured into it's stay ready, just yeah. like you said. Stay ready, stay consistent. Uh, you never know one when your time's up or when, when not when your time is up, but when you're when you're in the game, when you could be called up, anything can happen at any point in time. But you could also be responsible for giving a great look in preparation for one of the biggest games. Yeah. What else, producer Sam? So that was more of the mental pillar of the pure athlete. Now I want to switch to relationships. Mm. OK, so we all know how much. Jason and Travis love each other. Mm -hmm. Jason is Travis's big brother. He plays for the Eagles. He was in attendance um, with his family on Sunday night in Baltimore. Shirt on. As well. Shirt on yeah. this time. Shirt yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, after winning the game, the two of them met on the field for a very emotional moment. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you know them at all in any way, you'll know that they very much brace being emotions and, and mm -hmm. having them and, and letting the world see that. And I just want to know, how important is it for families to be there for their athletes like this, especially in families with multiple athletes? How do we as parents and coaches and teammates help to instill a sense of pride for one another, as well as sharing the success in others, even if it's from the stands or the sideline or home, if that's the case. I'm going to jump on this and then you can run with it. Go for it. Before I forget this thought, because it literally goes back to don't praise the statistic. Uh, that is a raw and genuine response that everybody should have. Be careful saying should. That's like a, a certain <laughs> certain word. But I, I, I do. I believe that that is the raw and honest response you should have. Anybody else know what happened in that game with Travis Kelsey? I Where? do. Go ahead. He broke the all-time receiving record for anybody. He has 152 uh, catches in the postseason, and he passed Jerry Rice. Who Jerry Rice is no joke. One of my favorite receivers of all time, outside mm -hmm. of Lynn Swan. But 
uh, kind of a big name, Mr. Jerry Rice himself. And all he was, all Jason was talking about is finish the story, finish the book. Mm-hmm. He didn't, there, I mean, they may have talked about it afterwards, but on the field, and you can find clips of that, I'm pretty sure it did not say, hey, great job, yeah. you, know, you passed Jerry Rice. <laughs> it was nothing but but pride. Um, I mean, that's really the best word for it, it, is pride. I remember running down the sideline with my little brother, like literally, it was like 60 yards in a championship game. He's he's four years younger than me. Um, it was Pee Wee football, and I was helping dad coach his team. I I think it was a sophomore in high school, and I'm literally running down the sideline with him. And it was it, that's what it reminded me of, and it gives me chills thinking about because that's just the raw, genuine response of how it should be. Mm-hmm. It was about finishing the story and congratulating and being proud of somebody you love. And I think that's a great way to show up. There was nothing about statistics or pointing out certain things. It was go finish your book. Yeah, I think there's a lot of videos circulating of them on the field, and it's just so telling that they're not just a family, like, when the cameras are around. Um, They are a true, genuine family. And, I mean, as I'm about to leave for nationals, (laughs) one of the best parts of any dance nationals that I've ever been to is hugging whoever's there for you afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, For me, it was always me hugging my mom, and I'm getting teary-eyed thinking (laughs) about it because it is just, like, the best moment of, seeing someone that maybe like you look up to and you love so much like being there for you in that moment when maybe like if you do have multiple athletes in the family maybe you haven't been the one that's always been in the spotlight Mm -hmm. and then you finally get that moment to have that feeling Mm -hmm. which is it's indescribable honestly and here since you said that i'm going to touch on one more thing because i was going to try to avoid it because i think people are sick of talking about it but when have i gone status quo and just followed that but you said a, a, a great point is, you know, you love seeing people who are there to support you and love you enough to be there and, and look to hug you afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and while, you know, Jason was down there with, with their dad, Papa Kels, uh, with someone of her magnitude and impact on this world and what she has done with her career as a person – Put all your politic bullshit aside and whatever. Like, put all that stuff aside. We're talking about people Mm -hmm. here. Taylor could have sat up in the box and hid behind her bodyguards Mm -hmm. and whatever other entourage was there. And to have her run down flights of stairs and make it from across the field, like you could see her in the interview, like, yeah, we were all the way over there. And and she went out of her way to do it. People um, who love you enough to show up and go to whatever lengths, no matter what, what the scenario is i thought that was pretty cool too Mm -hmm. because everybody deserves to have that whether it's a significant other whether it's family some people don't have family left to watch you play Mm -hmm. and that's another great point as i move away from the 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 taylor swift reference um some some kids you play with play against some teammates you play with play against might not have anybody there Mm -hmm. so going back to your relationship conversation is making this always bigger than yourself. Yes, you have a job to do, but rewarding, congratulating, and being outside of yourself for somebody else, mm-hmm. whether you're in the stands or on the team, um, show up for them and congratulate everybody accordingly. Even if you're on the opposing team, not always fun. Take it with a grain of salt. But it really stands for the character of who's around you and honestly can really help you figure out who's in your oval. Yeah very quickly but it is one of the most fun times when you know for that moment i i don't think everybody's so worried about as an athlete oftentimes you're worried about i gotta nail this you know or this is my time or i've got to produce for my team even Mm -hmm. if it's from the best space possible but in that moment you are truly a team and you figure out who is also on your team that doesn't have a number on their back Mm -hmm. and that's a very very cool feeling when And there's a lot of relationships that spark or re-spark through that moment because it's so much bigger than yourself. There's people on that team that have beef Mm -hmm. that some of them is probably squashed after last night. And in that moment, and that's what you need to remember as as student athletes and and as coaches and as parents is it's like it's a it's a high emotional time. There's a Mm -hmm. lot of things going on. But in that moment. There's so much that can change for the better. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that you need to recognize on who's there, who's showing up, and how you were treated going forward um, in that time. So 
Yeah, and it's I also it. yeah, and it, there's also something to r- always remember. I did this as a dancer and as a coach. Like if you know that someone doesn't have someone there, mm-hmm. that's the person you should go to first. And yeah. I like just did this a couple hours ago. I was like, hey, let me know if any of your parents aren't going to nationals because you're going to be my first hug after you get off the floor. Mm-hmm. And you just have to show up for that, and you have to show up for them as people. And be the person who's like, I'm so proud of you, even though that might have been the worst run they ever did. Like yeah. if their parent or loved one was there, they would be proud of them. So you have to take that role for them so that they don't feel like I'm the only person who doesn't have anyone here. No, no, no. Yeah. You're going to have so many people here because we love you all so much. It doesn't have to be a family member. It can be a coach, a friend, a, your friend's parent. It can be whoever. Yeah. Yeah, and in that time, too, I mean, if you are on a team or, or whatever the scenario is, especially as a student athlete, if, you know, that that can creep in and you can allow that to really knock you down and out, it could predetermine your performance before you have an opportunity to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is something that we talk about all the time is is if you are in that scenario or maybe you're a family that has a, a scenario like that or you don't feel like you fit on the team or whatever – Um, Or maybe you're a student athlete who uh, might not have somebody there in your corner for something like that. Uh, Don't be resentful for what you don't have. Be grateful for what you do. Mm -hmm. And if you need to, say something. You know, speak to a coach. Tell one of your your best friends and be okay with the help that you're about to receive. And just say, look, I'm really kind of upset that my parents aren't able to go. Like, it's it's affecting me and I I don't want it to. Be on the front end of that. There's no weakness in that. And there should not be any resent. You know, every family's scenario is different, whether, you know, maybe they've lost loved ones early and mm-hmm. they're not around, or maybe financially it's like we just can't afford to go yeah. or we have to stay working or they have a job that require you know, whatever the case is. Uh, be open about that mm-hmm. and be honest with that. If you're a parent that knows you can't go, like, do not beat yourself up over, over yes, it's as a parent, like, I still to this day coming to the office, it's like, I just want to, I want to take my kids to school. I want to pick them up. I want, I don't even want them to go to school. Like <laughs> I just want to keep them to myself and go play hockey and b- build race cars and, and just spend so much time with them. But at the end of the day, that's, that's your decision that you have to make, but do not beat yourself up over it, whether you're a parent, student athlete or, or uh, whatever you're a part of going mm-hmm. into that scenario, do not beat yourself up over something that, I can't say you can't control because you kind of can, yeah. but don't beat yourself up for a decision that you had to make. Mm-hmm. Um, and just be there for the best you can and talk about that. If, if, if that is your student athlete and you can't go, be open about it and discuss it and tell them you're going to watch and you're still going to be there. And uh, I should probably stop now because <laughs> I've been in that scenario where it just wasn't feasible or I missed one of my dad's races and I was resentful to myself for picking baseball over one of dad's races. And dad was, res- it's a, you know, my mom wasn't able to get off work in time. And it's like, I, I can bring so many real processes and, you know, even, you know, you have a whole story you could tell. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's not worth that because there's so much more and there's so many people there that are not trying to replace that for you. Yeah. They're just trying to be that Mm -hmm. for you um, in a moment where you don't even need it most. It's just that's the respect and and the pride and joy that people have for you. Allow it to happen. Yeah, and I think it's a really cool thing to see, too, and have that community that kind of comes around you even when you might not want it to. You have to kind of accept it and just know, like, this is happening to me for a reason. I don't know why. And, like, know that you've been put on a team or in a group that is there to build you up. And accept Mm -hmm. it for what it is. Um, For me, not to me. Yeah. So. In your way, not on your, or on your way, not in your way. Yeah. Man. Well. You want a question? Yeah. (laughs) You want a question? Uh, Sure. Let's go. All right. So a question that we've gotten this week is, um, Something we've kind of touched on before, but we can expound on it. So um, the question is, we've heard a lot about boots that are not the best for foot injuries. Um, why, in your opinion, are boots not the greatest? Uh, well, it just depends on the scenario. Yeah, I think we've talked about uh, talked about this. Um, I wouldn't say at nauseum, but we've yeah. so many different platforms we've yeah. talked about it on, whether it's in person or on a podcast. Uh, as far as some of these injuries and and you know, boots specifically, time and place. Uh, it just depends on, you know, d- it depends on the injury. 
and having a proper evaluation done and exams will tell you what's exactly necessary and needed Mm -hmm. as far as um you know you rolled your ankle that means you're out four to six weeks and you're in a boot for the first two like just reading the script it's more dynamic than that yeah because there's a lot of times too where it's like maybe you have an ankle sprain or strain sprain which two different things which we won't dive into but um, sometimes they get grouped together as yeah. sprain strain. Yeah. Same thing. No, it's definitely not. Nope, that'd be different. <laughs> but the the vulnerability of the joints what's most important. And if there is laxity and vulnerability to the point of potential dislocation or further injuring right. uh, more tissues. But a lot of times too, leaving the boot off in those scenarios, allowing movement and um, you know, compression is, is good in a sense, but now you have constant compression on the area, which I don't really agree with myself um, in certain scenarios. Constant compression in the area. Wear a compression boot and, mo- you know, immobilize it could lead to other things if it's not necessary because the joint's flopping around like this. That's when you use boot. Yeah. That's when you cast it. That's when you splint it is to prevent um, abnormal or excessive mobility um, through a joint or anatomical structure. Yeah. Not always the case. I think most oftentimes we need to read the script and make sure it fits the story. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times um, people don't know that actually loading your joint promotes healing. It promotes the movement of all the scientific things that we don't need to get into <laughs> on this podcast. The geeky nerdy stuff yeah. as I like to call it. <laughs> but it like creates the movement of healing properties in your joint. So mm-hmm. when we're talking about an ankle, you're putting it in a boot. It's kind of like putting your ankle in cement for four weeks. You can't move it and then expecting you to get out and you be the mm-hmm. same. You're not going to be. And anybody with uh, you know having a, a broken arm yep. or a broken leg and it's like you get that cast off and you hold it side by side. Yep. You're like, what? It's like, holy cow. Like, yeah. I got Popeye over here and I've got Daisy over here. Yeah. It's like, what, are we do- <laughs> what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, you know, there is a lot of atrophy that can happen. So uh, the boot specifically, yeah, lock that ankle in place. And again, time and place, but it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. If, it, if it is time and place and you lock that thing into place, what's happening to soleus? What's ha- happening right. to plantaris if you have it? The gastrox, you know, what else is involved uh, up the chain? There's so much more involved that can be uh, atrophy is a pretty high buy-in word it's very (laughs) very intense word but um you know there's a lot of the the muscle that is deteriorating is another very high buy-in i'm trying to make it yeah i'm trying to not go that high buy-in with it but um there there's definitely some atrophy and some some deterioration that can happen throughout the entire chain just locking out one joint so that's one of the most often ones we see as well i mean i guess you can talk about wrist too um but time and place yeah what i will say is if you go somewhere and it's their first defense to put you in a boot question them check your sources be like why why yeah just say why and if they have a good answer then sure but if they're oh it's just because what we do eh, goodbye (laughs) yeah and that's a good point you bring up is is, you know ask why Uh, and i talk about this a lot of time when i speak and you've heard me say it and you've adopted it too is it's like a lot of people tell you what it is yeah You have a sprained ankle. You rolled your ankle. Your ankle is swollen. We are going to put it in a boot. So they told you what. They didn't tell you why. Yeah. So it's like, well, because your ankle is swollen. That's not quite good enough. What's involved? What's damaged? Is there joint laxity? And that's why doing some of this, too, hopefully to help equip you with better questions. We've had, um, last year was uh, a local collegiate football player, his senior year, halfway through ankle injury exactly what we're talking about said he was done for his senior year we brought him back in three and a half weeks he was able to play his last two or three games which is huge when you're in that Um, volleyball player this year uh, mom is a raving fan so is he we love them and they've helped a lot of other kids with not just foot and ankle injuries but um, a lot of other student athletes coming through and so we just want to be able to equip you guys with find out why not just what yeah, and the other questions. the other thing with boots too is it's not just messing up things at the ankle; it's messing up things all the way up the chain. Mm-hmm. So many people get out of boots, and then their gait, their walking pattern looks so different. And they're like, "Well, why is my hip hurting now?" Well, I'll tell you: you just put like a three inch block on your foot and acted yeah. like it was normal. Yeah, yeah, it's not a lack of ibuprofen and Tylenol. No. I can tell you that because yeah. that, that's the next thing. It's like take some of these, and uh, well, now I've got this going on. Oh yeah, well, just take some of this. And, yeah. Um, it's yeah it can definitely con- cause a, a conglomerate of issues yeah. throughout so just make sure the script fits the story mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Check your sources. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your why. And if you have any questions, it's like, we. I guess I got to be a little bit careful. I just want to be a resource for anybody who wants a resource or a uh, um, a second opinion or, uh, you know, feel free to, to message us and ask, be like, Hey, saw the podcast. Don't know you from Adam or Eve. Uh, so, but I'm going to ask you anyway, because you said to, and just send us a message say, Hey, my athlete has this going on. Um, not even what we would do. You don't even have to ask us what we would do. What questions should I ask? Yeah. Because without us doing an evaluation, it could be hard. It could be easy for, but we can also give you like going into the evaluation, ask this, this, and this. Yeah. If you hear this, ask this, this, and this. Here's why you would. Here's why you wouldn't. Depending on the scenario, ask this, this, and this. Um, so we could we could definitely be up or, you know, we're definitely up for doing that. Yeah, for sure. Well, this was a great one. Another good one. You're uh, on a plane. By the time this comes out, you will be sure in will be in the Orlando. Air. Yeah, at uh, you guys will be at the ESPN Center. Yep, we'll be at ESPN World Worldwide Center of Sports. I think is the full name. Oh, okay, so. right there, uh, Kissimmee. Yeah, <laughs> with your Mickey ears on. No, Nick, no Mickey ears for me. No. But, uh, <laughs> so you will be at it's a business uh, trip. Uh, what which which A is it? U-D-N-D. Uh, U-D-A. U-D-A yeah. High School. Yeah, U-D-A High School Nationals. That'll be good. Yep. So we'll have to do a whole episode on the recap of that. Yep. We've uh, we've had uh, a few of these teams that are going in the area come do recovery nights, mm-hmm. which has been super cool. We've done a couple uh, Ask Me Anything questions or sessions with these teams. Yeah. And uh, there will be some... Uh, you will you will know if you see the swag. Yes, that will be us. You will see the schools that we are helping and uh, head that way to nationals. But we are also uh, have other schools not locally in our community that we are in touch with that will be there as well. So yeah. that's super cool. But uh, fly safe. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you get some time off. <laughs> your mo- your boss must be a cool guy or gal. <laughs> Producer Sam over there rolling her eyes. <laughs> Well, hopefully, we uh, have another great episode to talk about, which we always do. Next uh, next week, we've got, again, we've got more guests coming on. We're scheduling some more out. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, Will's, if you haven't watched it. That yes, is a good one. it's a good one. Uh, former, well, I guess semi-current, but definitely a Navy SEAL. Mm-hmm. Um, so, great podcast there. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great week. February is here. Woo! We're headed towards spring very quickly. Baseball season is upon us as well. So as racing season, NASCAR starts this weekend. Let me just throw that plug there. They're at the Coliseum. Not my favorite race in the world, but it's coming. Producer Sam, you got anything? No, I can't wait to talk about NASCAR. Let's go. (laughs) Awesome, guys. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.